Hey, how's it going guys? JC here, and today we're going to be reviewing the rank 1 player on NA currently, and he plays a lot of Ikali, but he also plays Irelia quite a bit at around 1200 LP Challenger, so he's going to be really good, and there's going to be a lot to learn about him, so buckle up. You guys will be in for a treat, let's just say that. But first, I'm going to show you guys some really essential information that will be on the screen right now so that you guys can basically know what to build and know what to do with her. So that if you are planning to pick her up or if you want to face against her, you'll have some ideas of how she works. So the first thing I want to go over is press the attack. It actually procs off of her Q. Then all she has to do is just get two more autos. So it actually has, and she has a lot of burst damage. So she can actually get press the attack off really quickly. And the fact that she also goes into Domination Tree and gets the lethality with it. There's also a little bit of healing from Ravenous Hunters, so that's also really nice to have. TF Blade generally goes for the stock standard build, which is Triforce into Titanic Hydra, Boots of His Choice, and then Steric's Gauge. After that, it's a toss-up between a few items, usually Death Stance or GA, sometimes Randuins or maybe Thorn Mail. So those are the items you can go for. As for defensive AP items for the very end, there's more of Malmodius, Spirit Visage, and Adaptive Helm. As for skill order, you generally want to max W first if you're in top lane, but if you're in mid lane, he likes to max Q first. And the reason being is because at top lane, you tend to need to auto attack a lot more, so W really kicks in with that true damage in every hit, so you want to go for Triforce first, but in mid lane, he plays a little bit differently where he goes for Tiamat first for the wave clear and also for the burst damage and also maxes Q first so that that damage has a lot of AD and a lot of impact. So whenever you dash onto someone, you can dash more often because if you're maxing Q, it's going to be lower cooldown and then you'll be able to do that burst damage before you get exhausted or before you get kited away. So that's the idea behind it. So you guys can see right now there's quite a few big names on the screen. So you guys know it's really high elo. There's Febian on the enemy team, which is apparently the Azir. I'm not 100% sure on that one. Chow Dog is I'm a cutie pie and we have Viper at the top lane as Riven. So I'm going to jump into the game and let's see how we go. You guys can see right now that he maxes Q or he actually puts a point in Q right away. It's because that he wants to perhaps dash onto Azir. Do excuse the frame lag. There is quite a bit of frame lag and that is really unfortunate. It's not something I could do on my part. It's just how the video is. The VOD is just like that right now. Uh, hopefully it's not too bad because I'll try to skip over the parts that is really bad or if I'm silent if I don't talk then you know skip over those parts and I think that's important will be skipped that's for sure so early laning phase I feel like that's very important because you want to know just exactly how you lane as Irelia and he does go for those trades he also tries to get those minions to get that level 2 so he's doing a really good job in that regard but the thing is as he pushes this wave even just slightly forward into the next wave when the next wave comes he's not going to be able to farm it really well so right now he backs away after pushing in that one wave. And that's really good that he was able to push it in and let it crash into Tau. That's very important. That's really good wave management skill. It means that it's going to bounce back into his side. And that way he's going to be able to farm later on. But the fact that if, say, you were to push it not too fast, like if you were to push it too slow, then it'll freeze. Say, if you look at my mouse cursor, it'll freeze over here. And then Azir will just have free reign to just... Freeze it forever and Irelia will just not be able to do much about it, won't be able to farm, won't be able to get access to the minions. And you guys can see that I think Kha'Zix was in the river earlier and moved probably upwards. So that's why it's still relatively safe. Oh yeah, okay, so he's right there in the river. So you can see the exact position of Kha'Zix went towards his own blue buff or the blue side anyway. So right now, Irelia is very safe, especially in the position she's standing in. So... Very good. There's a really big wave coming up, so just simply let it crash into tower. Not much you can do. You can't really fight against someone when there's a really big wave. But the whole point of pushing it into tower and getting it to reset is right now. How she can farm all of this under tower, so it's really nice. Kind of questionable why Azir backed away, because this is where Azir can really just start poking at Irelia and getting like a lot of chunk damage, and probably even getting one extra potion charge out of her, at the very least. So right now, Irelia decides to, after taking the wave at the tower, hard shove the next wave and get it to crash into tower and again the reasoning is because you want it to reset so right here she pops her w her q and then auto attacks then e auto attack again that was all that damage also also press the attack just proc right away so that's really good i think azir used exhaust as well so that's something to note very important cooldown Okay, so we can see that the wave is getting reset back towards Irelia, and that's really good because now Irelia is in a very safe position where she won't be getting ganked too easily, and everything will be pretty smooth. But there is a really big wave, so depends on how she farms under tower, that's going to be the most painful part. 
But you guys can see Riven's coming in from the river, and Irelia is going to be able to dash to that minion, flash, and then dash again. Because she tanks so many minion damage, she was able to be low enough health to stun Azir as well. So that is like very impressive and very well played. The only reason I was able to follow this really quickly is because I've seen this earlier, so I was well, I was able to listen to what TF Blade was saying, and basically he knows that uh, Riven was coming in from the river, and that as long as he set up that stun perfectly in time, it's going to be a successful kill. Especially because knowing that Azir used exhaust earlier, so that's also very important. Okay, so right now he goes back with 1700 gold. He's going to go for a Sheen first, actually. I thought it was going to go for Tiamat first, but those two longswords are going to turn into a Tiamat, and that's when the farming really starts. You guys can see that right now he farmed really well. He's at 44 CS at 5 minutes and 45 seconds. That's really amazing. He probably had that a bit earlier because, you know what, it takes a while to recall and also run towards lane. So he's doing extremely well in terms of farm and all of that is because of wave management and also being able to CS really well under tower. So you can't really expect any less from the rank 1 player anyway. Okay, so now there's a relatively big wave. Ivan is to the side, but it looks like he's going to try to set up anyway. So he goes for the double dash onto minions, then he stuns Azir. And while Azir was stunned, we can see that Ivan wasn't able to get his Q off. So Ivan responded a bit too late on that one. You guys can rewind it if you want, but that's just how it went down. So back to farming. There was a really big wave, so it naturally will push towards you. But the thing is, it also depends on your champion. It can be very risky to dive into a large minion wave early on in the game. And that's exactly what this Irelia did. But I think it works towards Irelia's advantage, because if you're diving into a minion wave, you're going to be taking some damage, and any bit of damage you take is going to lower your health, and it's going to be enough so that you can get your stun off, and that's very crucial. Okay, so here we can see Azir comes right back to lane, and at the same time we have Ivern and Riven in the riverside, so we're going to see what happens. The lane is starting to slow push, but now that Azir is pushing it back, so the red wave is going to crash into tower, but there are a, there's a gank coming, so Irelia is not able to respond because the backline minions weren't low health, so he wasn't able to jump onto the backline minion and then jump onto Azir to get a stun off. Irelia was playing really far up, very aggressive, so it was a telltale sign for Azir to know that there's something up, there's definitely a gank coming, and also top lane was missing for Azir's point of view, so that's how a challenger player would think, and that's how he would respond, so he's able to survive that even if there wasn't any ward coverage. It looks like Irela is going to go back, but she does have all her cooldowns, so if Azir was to face check her, Irela can probably one shot or like burst and probably kill Azir outright. So right now we can see this is where Tiamat comes in, and he has near perfect CS, like 70 CS at 8 minutes. Well, he's going to get red buff because it's an Ivan, you know, Ivan OP. He's going to get red buff, and that is going to be really nice in lane. He's also going to get blue buff as well. That's just beautiful, and the fact that you can now use your Q to splash the Tiamat is also really good. So you can auto attack, which splashes Tiamat, you can use the active, and you can also use your Q. So all of these will just make sure that wave clear just happens so seamlessly and so quickly. And once you get Titanic Hydra, you're going to be able to splash really long range. I feel like Titanic Hydra is pretty essential on Irelia's because you can get the backline, you can get the caster minions really low health without really doing too much other than just auto attacking the frontline minions or auto attacking the enemy champion. And it just cuts off their escape by dashing to the backline minion once it's low. So you guys can see that he initially started by maxing W and now he's going to start maxing Q. And the reason for that is because he's now in a very dominant position where he can start to snowball. And he wants to be able to have that Q on a much lower cooldown and be able to burst a lot easier. So having that Q maxed is very essential in this sort of matchup where he's starting to dominate. So right now he's just farming whatever he can because that's what mid laners do, you know. They push out with wave clear and then they farm anything they can or they roam. But if they don't see a good roam opportunity, well, they can just simply farm. The fact that there is sort of a roam opportunity towards bot lane right now, but he has to clear out the minion and right now Azir has priority, so Azir might be able to roam to bot. Looks like nothing's going to happen because from Azir's point of view, it's just a tower dive and tower diving and Alistar with also Ivan over there, not so much of a good idea. I really is able to keep Azir in lane, so that's also very crucial. And Azir is just really hard shoving so that he can look for roam opportunities. He, I guess this Azir doesn't look to poke Irelia because Irelia is kind of fed. And if you were to poke Irelia under tower with having this many items, uh, as Irelia, I feel like there's a chance that Azir could die for it. So you guys can see that he rushes a Sheen first and then he goes for Tiamat. So that Sheen is just 
heavy burst damage. Every time you Q onto someone, it's going to hit like a truck. Also having Tiamat, it's just the AD, it's the wave clear. And AD is also very good, you know, because I really is going to scale off AD anyway, and that burst damage with AD is really nice. As for attack speed, it's not as important because you're not going to be doing an auto attack war with anybody. Say in top lane, if you're say up against Riven, you're up against Trinomir, you'll probably need that attack speed so that you can get your W true damage going. But in mid lane, it's completely different ballpark. We're just going for a heavy burst damage and wave clear. Just like a mid lane mage, really. So, oh, that's pretty unfortunate. He was actually knocked back from that. But it was a really hypey play, really aggressive play. And it's one of these, these are the kind of aggressive plays that you need in order to, say, break the barrier into master and challenger. That's how I feel is you can play really calculated and really safe. And you'll probably just peek at diamond. But if you want to climb any higher, you'll need to know your champion inside out and be able to get those crazy high fee all-ins that people just don't expect. And when you don't expect it and you get those kills, you start to snowball off that because you'll probably be able to find even more kills that just out of nowhere, like he's just going super aggressive and he baits out an exhaust. And you know it's a bait because he didn't even use his ult. So that I really didn't even try to go all in. Like dash to minion and Azir with W up and then just, you know, auto attack E, auto attack. That's pretty much the combo along with Tiamat, obviously, if that's up. But otherwise, yeah, that was a pretty risky play. He knows fully well that Azir had Zonias though. And then he tried to finish it off with Corrupting Potion and ult charge. So that was pretty good, but the thing is he forgot to use his ignite. He thought that he actually got the kill, I feel like that was what was in the VOD was he thought he got the kill. I was pretty sure that ignite wouldn't have made a difference, but in this case actually did. But it was really click intensive, there was so much to that combo. So right now Irela is going to go back and buy the components for Titanic Hydra. And that's going to be very important when it comes to farming and when it comes to hitting that back line like I told you guys earlier. At 12 minutes he was at 130 CS, you guys will see that his CS goes off the charts and just pay attention to his farming patterns. He has to flash here because if he walks around that wall, he's going to take too much damage and just straight up die. So he was trying to make some aggressive plays again, but this one just wasn't worth it to be honest. Like a ult for a flash, not really worth it. But because we see Riven coming in, it probably was worth it actually. So Riven's going to come in and this time Azir has no ultimate. And we'll see that, you know, Riven goes for a really aggressive play. Probably going to get the kill here. I really actually snipes it with the ultimate. And right now, as long as those two group together, Kha'Zix isn't going to get isolation damage, so he's going to back away. And that was a very, very clean dive. So back to farming, pushes out the mid wave. You notice how he gets really good farm because all he's doing is just shoving into tower constantly. So if you're able to just constantly shove into tower, get jungle camps, and then keep shoving, you're going to get really good CS. As long as you have Tiamat, Tiamat is just an amazing wave clear item. It's going to help you a lot in your CS. Now we can see there's Ivan's red buff for red buff for Ivan. We'll see who gets it. Probably Irelia. Although I think Riven could also snag it as well for herself. I think just having an Ivan is just so nice for a mid laner because they have access to, say top lane will have access to red buff. Maybe not this time, not in this case, but most of the time top lane would have access to red buff and mid lane will have access to blue buff every single time. I think not the first one though. The first one Ivan doesn't actually, isn't able to give out blue buff or red buff. But I think after the first initial clear, he can. So yeah, just dash to cannon minion, then stun, and then after that, he actually holds on. Did you guys see that? That was really amazing. So what happened was, he dashed to a cannon minion, and then after that, he was in auto melee range to stun Azir, and then auto attack, auto attack, and when that was happening, Azir just pushed her away, and then he didn't use Q, so he just simply Q through Azir's wall, and is able to get that uh, result. So I'll just rewind that really quickly. So right now he's attacking the tower, he's going to probably pop W and then Q onto the wolf and then Q onto a backline minion, then Q onto Azir. So that's just how it's done. And all of that because W active and also Titanic Hydra and Sheen. Sheen is also very important. But you guys can see that if you have Q on Smartcast and you have W active on, then you can simply just dash to Small Wolf or dash to a backline minion and it'll one shot it and you'll be able to have that Q reset. So it all happens so quickly, but hopefully because I broke it down for you guys, you guys will be able to do that in your games as well. So make sure you have your Q on Smartcast so that you can pull these things off. Because if you don't, then it's going to be very, very slow, very sloppy, and it's just not going to work out. 
But yeah, Janna's going to be able to peel them off, and yeah, everything's going to be dandy for Maokai. Maokai's going to survive another day. But right now, I rally at 169 CS at 16 minutes. Really good. I'm just going to tell you right now that CS is going to skyrocket. She's going to be about like 50 CS above the curve of what you're supposed to be. So for example, say at 24 minutes, she'll be at 290 CS, something like that. So pay really close attention how you CS. And that way, if you play a mid laner and if you struggle to get that CS or that benchmark, say 10 minutes, 90 CS, 20 minutes, 200 CS, if you're struggling, pay attention to her rotations and just exactly how, like just knowing exactly where he goes to get all the CS that he's getting. As you guys can see, most of it is just shoving out mid lane constantly, non-stop, just to keep a zero. <laughs> but you guys can see how he's dashing through those minions and he's able to trick a zero into thinking that he's dashing onto a zero. So that's where the preemptive ult was. And then after that, it was just dashing onto a zero after the wall was up and then just using, I guess, auto E auto with the uh, Titanic Hydra reset. So it's a lot of burst damage and now he finishes Triforce so he's going to have a lot of attack speed as well. But before that, to be honest, if you have that combo that I just said, the Auto E Titanic Hydra, that's like a lot of burst, right? And that doesn't require any attack speed. So that's pretty much what you're going to get when you jump onto someone is you're not going to be able to use that attack speed effectively. So you want to just have as much quick burst damage as possible and also wave clear. Which is also, it gets me thinking that it, I'm also inclined to think that maybe Electrocute might be good in this situation where you're trying to go for a lot of burst damage. And Irelia is going to easily be able to get 3 hits off, you know, if you dash onto someone. Actually, yeah, if you dash onto someone with your W active, that's already 2 hits. And then if you just auto attack once, that's like 4 hits. I'm not sure if W actually counts as a hit, but if it doesn't, then you have your dash, you have your auto attack and your E, and that is also Electrocute, so... I really can proc that really easily. But yeah, that, that farm just looks crazy. You guys see that? That just looks so neat. And if you have Titanic Hydra, you can do that. If you rush it early, if you rush it first item, you can do that super early. Just having blue buff every time is also really nice. He might be rotating bot. But then he gets botted by pink ward, so... I'm a cutie pie already really far back towards his tier 2 tower, so not going to happen. Just going to keep farming and get that CS up. Once you get that CS up and you're really fed, you're going to just be able to run over anybody on the enemy team. It just doesn't matter. So he can just dash to that minion, and he can simply dash to Azir, but he knows that Azir knows, so that, that way Azir just basically dashes away. So there was no point in really chasing that. Probably no point in diving just yet, because kind of risky, and there could be some reward towards red buff, which red buff just got, well, we discovered red buff was taken, and also bot lane tower is gone, and everyone's just backing away from that bot lane tower, at least the enemy is, so there was nothing to do there, but it was worth checking, that's always like part of the rotation, and part of what you need to know is, if you were to go down there, there's a chance. So, oh, I think he's going a bit too ham, a bit too aggressive, because... You know, when you're too fed and when everything's going so well, you just let that get to your head and then you just don't think like, oh, maybe Kha'Zix could be there, maybe Azir has an ultimate and everything's just going to go downhill. So he could have died there, to be honest. If, say, the enemy was slightly more fed or he, if he was less fed, like, it could have gone really sideways. Just because he wasn't thinking and he simply just queued in at a really bad time when Azir has ult, probably has his exhaust up and Kha'Zix was missing. So you guys can see how there's the red buff on the minimap is indicating that there is a red buff there. But when he went there, it's not there. The reason is Ivan also gets a buff as well. So the fact that that happened was because Riven went and took the buff. And because it's an Ivan, he's able to get it because a teammate killed the red buff. So that's where the minimap icon shows the red. But I think it shows a little bit differently on the minimap if you are able to take it as a teammate and Ivan already has his red buff. So that's a little thing about Ivan, but Ivan doesn't really get picked nowadays, so that's kind of like something to know. So TF player is going to go back and probably work towards Sterex Gage, and that item is really good because it gives 30% tenacity, and that's really important because Irelia gets 10% tenacity, but then if she's outnumbered, she gets like 30% or something like that, so it's really, really good. So right now he's splitting bot lane and just getting all that farm really nice. It just looks so satisfying and you can see that he's 260 CS at 21 minutes or nearing 22 minutes. So really record breaking, really good. Like that's beyond Faker level CS. Actually Faker probably got this a uh, bunch of times as well. But yeah, they're going for Baron. Might be able to stop that because Alistair's going to go in with ultimate and probably be able to disrupt that for a very long time. So yeah, there we go. Alistair goes in. 
Probably doesn't take much damage because of ultimate, just really OP OP. And yeah, if... Can go for Kha'Zix. Kha'Zix flashes away, can't get him. And yeah, everyone else is way too high health for Irelia to just reset on. If he goes for Janna, that might be a chance, but then they go he's going to get locked down by Maokai, so it's just not going to happen. But right now, I think he's going to go for some really aggressive play. Yeah, he's going to try to like one-shot a zero or something. And also Riven was trying to TP in as well. But unfortunately, he just got locked down by Maokai way too hard. So I think in this game, what I really should be getting is Merc Treads. Merc Treads going to be really helpful. That's going to stack with her passive and also with Steric's Gauge. You can see it's always shove out a lane and then farm. Shove out a lane, rotate, farm. Even gets it off Kha'Zix, so that's really nice. So back to mid lane, shove it out and then rotate. But right now you can see 280 CS, 23 minutes, really top notch. So right here purchases Steric's Gauge and is going to go to top lane, perhaps even rotate to Baron, but definitely farm that out first. And we'll be in position to rotate and do something if they do start Baron, so that's always a good position to be in, is to be in either mid or top lane if Baron can be contested. Right now the kills are very even, but the thing is, objectives are not even at all, and that's why Irelia's team is winning way harder than the enemy team. It's never about the kills, it's always about the objectives. As you guys can see, the enemy team has zero towers, while Irelia's team has basically every outer tower and two turrets uh, bot lane, so that's like, that's literally four towers in total. Oh, that is unfortunate. So Azir dashes in and then ults her back. Instant death right there. But also the fact that they really lacked vision in River and wasn't able to know that, or I guess he should have seen it coming because he's rank one, but you know, everyone makes that mistake and there was just really a lot, a huge lack of vision there. So we'll see if his team wins a team fight. But you guys can see that Janna's W just does so much damage. I think right now a lot of people like to build some AP on Janna and also max W. So yeah, basically the result of the team fight is everyone died except for these three. And Irelia is going to come back to life and we're going to see what happens. So he actually, Ivan actually accidentally takes his Q and goes all the way into melee range. So that's kind of questionable, but there is backline minions that are low health. So he Qs to a minion, flashes, then Qs again onto Janna. And now all he has to do is just pick up that last kill. Yeah, cool. So yeah, really nice. And that's a double kill right there. It's going to be a Baron, I'm pretty sure. Either that or an, the next objective, whatever it is. But in Challenger ELO, if you have something like this where you get two kills, Baron's going to get contested right away. Whether it's contested by the enemy team or whether it's contested by the team that basically scored the kill, it's, they're going to go straight for Baron like without waiting, no hesitation. I noticed that, say, in lower elo games or in the games that I, I play, maybe in flex queue or if I'm playing with gold players or plat players, they won't do that. They won't rotate to Baron right away. They might actually head towards bot lane even though we just got two kills and say it's like the 26 minute mark where you can rush a Baron. A lot of people just don't. So make sure you guys do that and incorporate that into your game. Make sure you rotate and be there in position for it when you see there's two people down or something like that and that Baron can be taken. That that damage is just disgusting. That was just like a WQ, WQE, and wait, actually let me just see that combo again. So his W is actually down. He Qs and then E's auto with ult and Titanic Hydra. Okay, that's actually pretty nutty damage. That's the result of being on the winning team, having Baron and just getting all those objectives, getting enough gold to buy all those items as well. And with objectives, it also comes with the territory of having being higher level and all of that good stuff. So right now, 314 CS at 27 minutes. It's absolutely amazing, absolutely stomping it. And they're probably going to just end off the game right after this as well. <laughs> he manages to get the kill with no mana. This is basically auto attacking with zero abilities used. But yeah, this game's going to end off. Hopefully you guys like that. There was some really hypey plays. A lot of amazing stuff happened that I feel like we can learn. And also, I'm pretty sure I got down some of the combos for you guys. So if you guys maybe didn't see a combo that I explained really well, you guys can re-watch it and, you know, even comment down below exactly what combo I missed, the timestamp and all of that, or any information that I might not have said while you guys were watching this. 
please feel free to comment down below. Let me know if there's a particular champion and player that you guys want me to review next. And if there is, post it down below. But yeah, anyways, that's the final damage chart. I really are pretty much top of the chart. And also, I'm a cutie pie on Draven. Was also really high up there. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you do so as well. Thank you so much for watching to the very end. And I'll see you all in the next video. Cheers.